Let me lift my voice. I know that yes, I'll be home and ever to rejoice when in service for my Lord. Dark may be, but I cling more close to Him. I know He will. Satan's snares may vex my soul and turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead and leaves whatever be tied. I'm singing, oh, I want to see him and love. Up on his face and up there to sing forever of his saving grace. I know that on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. I know that yes, I'll be home. To rejoice, I'm singing. Oh, I want to see him and look up on his face and up there to sing forever of his saving grace. I know that all the streets of the Lord. Voice, I know that there's a path. I'll be home and laugh but to rejoice. I'm singing oh, oh, I want to see him look up on his fame. I'll let to see him forever. His same finger of a home, the street of glory. Let me live my voice, cause you know that kiss of I'll be home at last and ever to rejoice. Oh, I won't. To see the emblem upon his frame. I will there to see him forever on his saving grace. I will own the street of glory. Let me live. My voice, cause you know that cares um, I'll be whole, my last, and a hair to rejoice. Thank God for Jesus Christ, and glory be to God, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, and for that we ought to be thankful. It's good to be among the people of God. One more again, uh, when many of us uh, could have been someplace else, God has allowed us to assemble ourselves as his children on the first day of the week. It's good to be alive. God is alive. He has allowed us to be alive. For that we ought to be thankful. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I, I uh, am just uh, filled. Isn't that what John said? On the first day of the week, he was filled with the Spirit. Is that right? On the first day of the week. Um, I, uh, I want to uh, make uh, just a couple of announcements, and we're going to fellowship for just a few moments, and then we'll get into the lesson. 
uh, Vacation Bible School is now two weeks away. Amen. Uh, we're very excited about this year. God is uh, doing some things, and uh, I am just right now in awe of how uh, he is blessing uh, our congregation and how he is blessing the servants who assemble here uh, to be able to do some things to help um, encourage a young person, encourage someone who does not know the Lord, uh, that they might uh, have a relationship with him. And we're excited. We know most of you have already registered and you have heard us make that announcement time and time again. But if you have not, uh, please register on our website. It's very easy to do. If you just click right on the uh, VBS poster on the website, it'll take you right uh, to the page you need to be on and it will uh, ask you all the questions it needs to ask. And we want you to be a part of that. Uh, also in uh, putting on something uh, of the magnitude in which we do our vacation Bible school, it takes a lot of preparation. You don't just wake up and it happens. You got to get ready. Uh, and uh, that's a sermon for somebody. You got to get ready. Amen. I think it was Shirley Caesar who sang, you got to get ready. Amen. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to uh, ask those of you who have copies of old baby pictures, we want to we want to try to play a new game this year, and we're going to need an old picture of you and a recent picture of you. Uh, and some of y'all can win that game because your picture can be so old that we can't tell who it is. Amen. And that's all right. We can scan that for you and take a copy of it, and we won't keep your picture uh, and then take a recent picture, uh, and, and we want to get that together. You can email that. Uh, if not, you can uh, just see me or uh, the people in the back. They'll help you out. Uh, on next Sunday, we're having a volunteer meeting for all those who'd like to volunteer for the week. Uh, next Sunday, the 14th at 2 p.m., we want you to come uh, and sign up uh, at our volunteer meeting. And this year, our theme is Winning with Team Jesus. Don't y'all want to win? Don't you want to be on Team Jesus, hey, Amen. Uh, and uh, this year, we're going to have Vacation Bible School cheerleaders. That's right. That's right. Uh, 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 and, and it's for ladies only. I need to run that disclaimer while I'm here. You got to do that these days, you know. Um, uh, it's, it's for all ages from 2 to 92. I need to say 102 because Sister Moore is 95 and she might want to be on the cheerleading squad. So we don't want to tell nobody they can't do it. So, uh, but uh, that, that, that is meeting today at 2 in Rorick's Hall. Now we must say that the church does not have Affleck. Uh, so you cheerlead at your own risk. Uh, because whatever move you might try to do, we don't want you to be in traction and we don't want you trying to take us to court for your hospital bills. I think I need to say that too. Amen. Amen. Can you stand to your feet and find someone to greet this morning? We want to give them some Crenshaw love. Say good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And we will get into our lesson.
I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful life. A beautiful place of mansions fair and skies ever bright. Where all who obey the Savior dear forever shall stay. Yes, singing is praise by grace divine. I'm going that way. Yes, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior I adore is with me today. And I'm clinging to Him. And never to stray. And never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long. I'm going that way. Yes, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going. And Jesus, the Savior I adore, is with me each day. With me each day. And I'm clinging to Him. And never to stray. And never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long. Can we sing it one more time? I'm going Everybody together. Only if you know you're going that yes, way. I'm, I'm going that way. way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior I adore is with me each day. And Lord, I'm clinging to him. Never to stray and never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. In Luke chapter 7. I want to invite your attention to verse number 36 of Luke chapter 7. A very familiar passage of scripture to many of us. And I want to say at the outset that there are two angles uh, that I want to address. One today, and if the Lord spares life on next week, I want to address the second angle. Uh, there's a lot in this passage, and I am trying to uh, stay true to the theme that we have collected and gathered of Jesus and me. Uh, but there's so much in this text uh, that I would be remiss if uh, we dealt somewhat with it and left meat on the bones. Um, uh, Y'all know what it means to leave meat on the bones? Um, uh, I'm a level two chicken eater. Uh, Y'all... Y'all know the different levels. I think I, I preached this a few years ago. You know, my, my youngest son, he, he, he eats chicken. And, you know, you take the little drumstick and you just motor around the meaty parts. But you leave the gristle and the good, you know, you leave meat on the bone. And see, I'm a level two. I, I, I know how to separate the cartilage from the gristle. And when I'm done eating the, the, the meat, see, then, then it's nothing but a graveyard left. Now, my grandmama was a level three chicken eater because she ate the bones. And I'm not talking about KFC, y'all. I'm talking about she ate the marrow for the nutritional value. Now, I can't go there with her. I'll just take the meat. But y'all, some of y'all older folk know what it means. Amen. To eat the bones. So, so when I preach, I, when, I, when I get into a text, now I don't like to leave. I don't like to leave any meat on the bone. I like to, I like to separate that the cartilage from the meat and get off into it. So I, I just I wanted to say that because I, I, I'm not planning on finishing completely with our text. So don't, don't look for me at verse number 50 because we're not going to get there. 
All right. Uh, But I want to start reading at uh, Luke chapter 7 and verse number 36. The Bible says, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And Jesus, and he went to the Pharisee's house. And I want you to watch this. There is a comma in your Bible. If not, it's a semicolon. And it says, and sat down to eat. Now, I I want you to understand, on next Sunday, if the Lord says the same, the entire sermon hinges on what does not happen between that comma and the end of the sentence. Because there is something that has been left out uh, of the story between the time Jesus shows up at the house and the time they sit down to eat. Now, I know we read past that because we think, oh, Luke just telling the story and we follow along with the story. But I want you to understand now uh, that comma in verse number 36 after Pharisee's house. And then it says, and Jesus sat down to eat. The entire thought next week is going to deal with that comma. So I just want to whet your appetite for that because uh, what we just read was more than what just happened. It is actually what did not happen. So y'all stay with me on that. We'll get to that soon. Verse 37 says, and behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is, who is touching him. For she is a sinner. Now, I want you to watch this. It's interesting how you can say stuff to yourself, but not be bold enough to say it to the one who you mean it for. Amen, somebody. But you know the good thing about the Son of God? He's not like us. See, I don't know, Sister Glaze, what you're thinking. But the Son of God knows what's on your mind. I want you to watch this. And and although Simon has not, the Pharisee has not said anything to Jesus, Jesus knows what Simon means. So look at what he says. Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And so he said, teacher, or some of your versions say, rabbi, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50 And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Now, I want you to watch what Jesus does. Luke is telling us a story, right, about Jesus going to Simon's house. We know that Simon is there. We know that the woman who's a sinner is there. We know that Jesus is there. And I'm going to make a case that there are a bunch of people there. But but I want you to watch this. Jesus then tells a story inside of this story. Story. Y'all see that? So now, now we have a second layer to this, to this understanding because we're already at the home of Simon watching this dialogue unfold. And then Jesus takes us to yet another story about a creditor that has two debtors. And one debtor owes 500 denarii. The other uh, 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 creditor owes 50. Now, denarii was about a uh, 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 one day's wage. So I want you to think about it. You got to work all day to earn one denarii. So watch this now. There's one guy who owes 50 denarii. So I want you to think about how much you make in a day. And I want you to multiply that by 50. And that's the guy who owes the lesser amount. Then there's a guy who owes 500. Now, that's about 15 months worth of salary. 
Y'all see that? And, and, and he owes 500 denarii. And, and, and the Bible says neither of them have enough to repay. I want y'all, this is going to preach at the end, uh, Troy. Help me with this. I want, I want y'all, neither of them got enough money. See, see, so, so, so they're, they're both in the same boat. But you may say, well, no, Tyson, the one who owed more, uh, his boat's a little bigger. Then the guy who owed 50, uh, so it seems like there's difference. Well, there is difference. And I want you to watch. This is the point of Jesus' message. He says now to Simon, which one will love the creditor more? And Simon speaks correctly when he says, well, looking at all the facts of the story, obviously it's the one whom he forgave more. I want you to ask this. There are two people who owe. Neither can pay. One owes 50. One owes 500. Neither can pay. And, and, and the creditor, he, he, he dismisses or forgives each debt. But the difference in the two is not so much how much they owed. The difference in the two is how much each was forgiven. All right, stay with me here. Now, now, what happens is Jesus is telling a story, and y'all know what he does when he tells parables. The person he's talking to, he puts them in the story. Now, can we just cut to the chase for just a moment? Can we fast forward to the chase? This woman, the Bible says, is a sinner. Now, I want you to watch this. When the Bible calls a woman a sinner, it ain't talking about she a gossip. Oh, y'all go, don't y'all miss that. Uh, see, 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 this, this woman ain't a backbiter. Amen. She, 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 she's not a liar. Amen. This, this woman is a woman of the city and she's a sinner. I want y'all to see this. Now, 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 the Pharisee now, the Pharisee has been placed in the story. Now, the question is, of the two debtors, which one is the Pharisee? Now, our mind says, well, I would think by reading the whole thing, and plus I grew up listening to this, this passage, Tyson, so I know the end of the story, I would think it's the woman who owes 500. And it's Simon the Pharisee who owes 50. And you are right. How do we know that? Let's pick up the story again. Well, uh, verse number 43 says, Simon answered Jesus and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And Jesus said to him, you have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? Now, remember when I told y'all there's a big blank in that comma? This is what was filled in in the blank. I entered, Jesus speaking to Simon, your house. I entered your house. I said, we ain't at her house. We, we at your house. I'm sorry, it's your, I do know it's your, but, but it sounds better because it's your house, all right? Uh, I'm sorry, that's just a preaching technique. I'm sorry for those who are offended at my sloppy English, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I'm not sorry, it's what I do. All right, then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house, and when I entered, you gave me no water for my feet. So that tells us that comma back up in verse 36 was supposed to have some more in it. Simon left it out. So Jesus didn't get no water. But this woman has washed my feet with what? Her tears. And she wiped my feet with what? The hair of her head. All right. You gave me no kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet. Since the time I came in. Now, I want you to watch this now. Typical ancient Near Eastern greeting, even for men, is kiss on the cheek. Mwah, mwah. Now, I'm going to do it on the microphone, Miles, because uh, we, don't, we don't need to illustrate that. All right. This is on the World Wide Web. Amen. Uh, so it, mwah, mwah, it's on either side of the cheek. But this woman didn't kiss Jesus on cheek. She kissed his feet. Y'all see that? All right. Uh, since the time I came in, verse 46 says, you did not anoint my head with oil. But this woman has anointed my feet with what? Fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are 500, hmm, are forgiven. Why? It's evidenced by how much she loved. 
That's what's evidenced of it. All right. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Now I want you to watch this. When Jesus says your sins are forgiven, he ain't forgiven them on the spot. Forgiveness is already in place. I'm going to preach that at the end, too. All right. We got to come back to that. Verse 49 says, and those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this? Who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So for a few moments this morning, the angle I want to take for this morning, for all day today, is Jesus and my gratitude. Jesus and my gratitude. Typically, when we receive a gift from someone, we try to show our appreciation. Amen. The words thank you is probably the very least we can offer for what has been done for us. The nature of receiving a gift means that the one uh, that one did not do anything to deserve it or earn it. In other words, your paycheck is not a gift. You work for it all week and you expect it on Friday or on the 1st, or on the 1st and 15th, or whenever you get paid. It's not a gift. And I know out of graciousness, the person handing you your check, you may say thank you for handing it to you, but you don't thank them for paying you because if it's your job, you're supposed to get paid. So a gift is not something you earn or something that you're supposed to get. A gift is something given that you did not necessarily ask for. It is given because of the grace of the giver. What happens when the gift received is greater than anything you could ever imagine? What if you were given something that you could never afford to buy? What if the gift was too large for you to house, too heavy for you to carry, or too infinite for you to count? What if the giver of this gift went through painstakingly difficult circumstances to provide the gift? What if the provider of this gift had to sacrifice themselves just for you to enjoy the gift? What kind of response would that warrant, would that merit, would that mean for the recipient? Amen, somebody. Don't you realize when we worship on Sunday, we come together to show God and praise God for how worthy he is. He's worthy not because we say so, but because he is is so and when we assemble we do it to collectively to corporately to communally say thank you and we shouldn't have to beg nobody to say thank you now, 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 when my children were very young and Jen and I had to teach them how to be grateful, you got to tell them when somebody hands them something, somebody does something for them. Isaiah, say thank you. Nehemiah, say thank you. Micaiah, say thank you. Because at this point in their life, they don't understand the value and the importance of appreciation. But the older you get and the more Oh, you realize that that person didn't have to do what they did. The least you can do is show your appreciation by saying thank you. That's all it is. We're just saying thank you. And when we got to beg you to sing, Brother Barry, it's like telling that two-year-old, you need to say thank you. And sometimes they say thank you with attitude. Thank you. You know why? Because it's forced. You know why? Because it's coerced. You know why? Because I'm trying to teach him. And in the midst of teaching him, he got to learn because he don't know. She don't know. But I want to let you know that this woman was simply trying to say thank you. Amen, somebody. That's all it was. All right. Let me get a background. The Gospel of Luke is written to be inclusive of all people. The Gospel of Luke is one of my favorite gospels because it includes everybody. In the staunch patriarchal system of the ancient Near Eastern world, women 
Poor people, sick people, and downtrodden people were marginalized to the unacceptable outskirts of society. Thus Luke seeks to tell the story of Jesus, the Son of God, as the Savior for the least of them. This gospel unfolds within the tension that is created by the all-caring Christ, Jesus, and his willingness to seek and save the lost. It is contrasted with that of the Pharisees who are content in the restrictive demands of their interpretation of the law. Subsequently, as word spreads of Jesus, questions arise from his critics. Now, I want to show you a couple things right here in Luke, and then we're going to get into the text. I probably won't get uh, very far, but I want to show you these reports that's going out. Y'all got a few minutes to play Bible Land with me? Can, can you meet me in Luke 4? I want you to meet me in Luke 4. We're going to stay right here in Luke, and I just want to show you how Luke walks us up to this, 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 this dinner party at Simon the Pharisee's house. When Jesus comes, comes down off of the mountain. Y'all remember that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. He was up in the wilderness and, and when, and, and, and he was carried away to the wilderness. And when he come out, when he came out of the wilderness, the Bible says in verse number 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee and news of him went out through all the surrounding region. Y'all see that? Word is starting to spread about Jesus. Now, up until this point, we don't have in Luke any of the healing stories yet. We don't have any of the miracle stories yet. Uh, Luke just tells us from the jump street that after he's tempted of Satan, when Jesus comes down, word automatically starts to spread about Jesus. Stay with me in chapter 4. I want you to bump down to verse number 36. Now, up until this point, he's going to Nazareth, and he's taught in his synagogue, and he told us what he plans to do. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Y'all know that? That's verse 18. And, and he goes on, and they don't like his message, and they kick him out the synagogue, and literally they're trying to push him off a cliff. Okay? And, and Jesus says, look, a prophet has no honor in his own country. I mean, you just, you just like, that's what it is. And, and so Jesus moves on. So when we, get to, when we get to verse 31, the Bible says he goes down to Capernaum, a city in Galilee, and he's teaching them on the Sabbath. And guess what? There's a person who came to church that had a demon. Yeah, that's right. Everybody in here, amen, may not be uh, uh, led by the Spirit of the Lord. Sometimes Satan show up and we bring him with us when we come. Amen. And so Jesus rebukes the demon and, 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 and right there in the middle of the worship service. Now, y'all know what that means? That this man who was there coming to worship had been coming every week, probably had that demon. But see, couldn't nobody tell. But when the Son of God showed up, he picked out the right one who was messed up. Amen. What does that say to us, preacher, that you don't know who you're sitting next to? Amen. And just because somebody got a smile on their face, Stacy Adams suited and booted doesn't mean that everything is right with them. Doesn't mean that all is well with their soul. Amen. And there's sometimes you'll walk past a person who needs you to give them a hug, but because you ain't paying attention and don't know that that person got a lot on their mind, you'll just assume that they're all right. Go on back to your house, not pay attention to the fact that they were hurting and you sitting next to them two hours while Tyson preached an hour. Some of y'all going to get that on the ride home. So in verse number 36, the Bible says, Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word this is. For with authority and power he commands unclean spirits, and they come out. And verse 37 says, And report about him went into every place in the surrounding region. Y'all see that? The word is spread. All right. Follow me to report number three in Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, uh, if you get down to verse number 26, Jesus heals a paralytic man. All right? And, 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 and he told him, take up your bed and walk. And, and, and the man walked. And in verse number 26, the Bible says, and they were all amazed. And they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Y'all see all of that? 
Now, now, the report is that there's something about Jesus. The second report is, is that, 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 that Jesus is, is, is doing things and he's healing people and the word is spreading that he has a gift that he's given to folk. Then the third thing is, who is this man? Because he's doing some strange things. Now, 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 y'all know when y'all hear something about somebody, uh, red flags start to go up. And, 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 and in your conversation with the person who's telling you about somebody else, you then begin to ask questions so that you can fully get a better understanding of what you're hearing versus what you already know. Oh, y'all looking at me funny. Miles, if I came up to you, I said, hey, man, you know something? Uh, Troy the other day, man, was real tripping, boy. I don't know what was wrong with him. And I heard this. Da, 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 da. And, and then Miles is going to ask, what, like, for real? He did what? Where was he? See, you got to ask questions so that you can delineate whatever side you're going to choose to be on. Y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all know, we, we, we became professionals, professionals in this. Amen. Amen. You, you heard what happened. You, you wasn't there. But you heard what happened. Well, what if you got your information from a bozo? When I was in college, I never bought used books. Not that I was too good for used books, but I didn't want the notes in the used books. You know why? The last student could have got F's. Why do I want to read his notes? Amen. You, you need to do your own study, your own investigation, and be careful who you talk to. So, so, so what the Pharisees begin to do, instead, instead of going to ask Jesus, they're now going to ask questions of themselves to try to uh, figure out who is this guy. So can I take you through the questions really quickly? Just a couple of questions. All right, question number one. Now stay right there in Luke 5 for me. Look at verse number 21. Now Jesus is healing this paralytic man, and the problem is, is uh, they don't like the fact that he's healing uh, on, 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 on the Sabbath, and they also don't like the fact uh, that he's forgiven sins, and they don't like the fact that he's hanging out with people who, who don't look like them. Okay, so in verse chapter five, in verse number 21, uh, as a matter of fact, let's read verse number 20. It says, and when he, speaking of Jesus, saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? Y'all see that? Now, I want you to read the first part of verse number 22. It says, but when Jesus perceived their thoughts... Now, I want you to watch this. They didn't say it to him. They, they just said it to each other, and they thought it on the inside of their mind. That, that's the kind of person you can go talk to, and you despise them, but you smile in their face, but you think bad thoughts about them. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all ain't never did that before. Y all, y all, come on now. Smiling faces, smiling faces tell lies. Y'all ain't never heard that before? Didn't the OJs teach us? Smiling in my face all the while. They trying to take your place. The backstab. Y'all don't know nothing about that? I know I ain't the only one think like that, right? All right. All right. So, so instead of saying something to him, they say to each other, who is this who's blaspheming? Now they could have gone to Jesus and said, could you explain to me where you get the nerve to tell somebody they're forgiven when we have been taught from, a, from the cradle up that only God can forgive sin? Who are you to forgive sin? Y'all see that? So, so they're upset be, because, because he is pronouncing forgiveness and they don't think he has the power to. All right. Question number two is found in chapter five. Go down to verse number 33. All right, now he's having lunch with, with 
Matthew, and Matthew is a tax collector, y'all. Matthew is considered a sellout to his race and religion because he works for the Roman government collecting taxes against his own people, and he knows the Roman government is really doing his people in, and yet and still he works for them, like working uh, in a position where you know better, but you need a job, and so you do it because your job pay good, it pays well, I know, and, 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 and you do it because your job pays uh, very well, and, and you need that job, but you know you know it's hard on the people that you have to do your job on. Okay? And, and Jesus is hanging out with them. So tax collectors always got a bad rap in scripture. They were always numbered with the sinners. Jesus ate with the sinners and the tax collectors. Sinners and the tax collectors. I mean, tax collector could be an upright citizen. He can go to worship. He can not tell lies. He can be a wonderful man. But he's labeled with the sinners because of his job. So, so they don't like the fact that he's eating with them. And so look at verse number 30. This is Luke 5, verse number 30. And their scribes and Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and, y'all see that? And sinners. Why, 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 why do you do that? And I love what Jesus tells them. This is another sermon on another day. He says, well... Those who have no need of a physician, you know, they can do whatever they want to do. But those who are sick, that's who I came to see. Okay? Now, look at verse number 33. Then he said to them, because they got another question, why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise those of the Pharisees, but show us eat and drink? All right. Now, now, now the fourth uh, the third question, the second question is, why do you eat with tax collectors and sinners? The third question is, uh, why are your disciples um, walking around getting their grub on? And, and, and John's disciples fast. They're very spiritual men. They pray. And the, the, the Pharisees' disciples, they pray and they fast. Uh, but your disciples always eat. That's not very spiritual. So once you watch what the Pharisees are doing, they're building a case that Jesus is crazy and his followers are crazy. They're building the case that Jesus is not of God and his followers are not of God. Okay? Now, in our text, Simon thought to himself, if this man was a prophet, he'd know. And he'd tell this woman, don't touch me. But obviously, he ain't much of a prophet. But the question is, where does, uh, where does, where does Simon get that from? Well, uh, word is going out. And they, they have these questions, and they build in this case that, well, why, why do your, your disciples eat and drink? That's not very spiritual. You're not doing it like everybody else. All right, question number four is found in Luke chapter 6 and verse number 2. They're upset that Jesus is healing on the Sabbath. And the Bible says, and some of the Pharisees said to them, why are you doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? So they have these questions. Y'all see that? So the word is going out about who Jesus is and what Jesus is doing. People are hearing it, but then the Pharisees are hearing it, and they're asking questions. But they really have not come right out against Jesus and, and really blasted him. But I'm going to be honest with you, they're plotting. Y'all know what a plot is, right? Can I show you the two plots? All right, in Luke 6, 7. The Bible says, so the scribes and Pharisees watched him closely. Now, you know somebody's going to plot on you. They, they got to keep their eye on you because they're plotting. Okay? And they watched him closely whether he would heal on the Sabbath so that they could find an accusation against him. Y'all see that? So, so, so now they're not getting their answers to the questions that they're asking. So they have decided, well, we're just going to keep an eye on him to make sure he is doing what he's doing. Now, the problem with that is, you know, it's all good. But the problem is they decide to do that without really getting firsthand knowledge of Jesus. They didn't heard reports. They didn't ask some questions, but they didn't really get the answer they was looking for. And instead of saying, here, let me learn, they decided, well, I'm just going to keep my eye on you. And, and we're going to see whether or not, you know, you, you're going to do what it is you. All right, I'm running out of time. Plot number two is in verse number 11. The Bible says, and they were filled with rage. See, now they mad that Jesus is obviously breaking the law. So look what they did. They discussed with each other. What y'all think we ought to do to get rid of Jesus? All right, now, now, that's Luke. 6 11 we don't hear 
from a Pharisee again until Simon invites him for dinner. And so Tyson, why'd you just spend 15 minutes taking us through the, the reports, the questions, and the plots? It's because I want you to understand that what Simon was planning to do with Jesus was not nice. And see, what Simon was planning to do with Jesus was not help him get full and be a good dinner host to him. See, they're trying to figure out what can we do to put to shame this one who's openly breaking the law. Here's the point of the message. I'm already out of time, so let me just give it to you and I'm going to sit down. Our gratitude for the grace that God extends to us is shown by our love for him and to others. In other words, how we love is evidence of the appreciation we have for what God has done for us. The point of the message, brothers and sisters, and I, 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 I've, I've overstayed my welcome. I'm out of time, but I want to I bring it to a close this way. What, what the woman does by showing proper hospitality to Jesus is done not because she needs forgiveness. It's done because she has forgiveness. He said, well, preacher, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see that. I don't understand. Well, I want you to understand this woman is not there in hopes of trying to get Jesus to forgive her. She's there to thank him forgiveness already received. Preacher, how can you say that? The text don't say that. Well, I want you to watch this. What should have happened at Simon's house was hospitality. Water, oil, and a kiss. I want you to watch that. That's what should have happened. And we're going to deal with that next week in Jesus and my prejudices. But right now, I want you to watch this. The woman shows up with what? An alabaster flask of perfume. I want you to watch this. See, she comes to the party expecting to see Jesus already with her way of thanking him in hand. She's already in hand. And what she plans on doing is, is, is to anoint his head with oil. You don't anoint a person's feet with perfume. Now, I know some people's feet might need to be anointed with perfume. But that's not where you put perfume. You put perfume on the head. She, she was assuming that Simon was going to treat him like a proper guest. And all she was going to do was come in. And so you know something? Uh, let me anoint you because I've heard that your message accepts people like me. See, I, I'm a sinner uh, and I'm not one of them uh, uh, just past sin. I'm a deep, deep sin sinner. And, and I heard that, that those who have faith in you are having their sins remitted. And, and, and because of that, I know that with you, I'm accepted. I know that they might look at me funny, but with you, I have value. I know they might tell me to get out, but I know you will tell me, come on in. I, I, I know I may not have much stuff to say in society about control or anything like that, but I know with you, me, and, 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 and forgiveness, we can get along. So, 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 so she comes. She comes ready ready to anoint him out of gratitude for what Christ has done. Now, that's the, that's the message. Now, now, what does that mean to you? Well, can I tell you what it means to me and you? Well, if the evidence, because remember the story within the story. Why? Who should forgive? Who, the man forgave both of them. Who, 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 should, who should be the one to be more happy? Who should be happier? What a guy who was forgiven 500 denarii. And then Jesus says, well, to whom much is forgiven, there's much love. And if you feel like you have not been forgiven that much, 
then you don't love that much. So you 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 don't have to show me appreciation if you really don't have much to be thankful for. I said, preacher, I still don't see you talking to me. Well, all right. When we show God we love him and when we try to thank him, those of us who've been forgiven 500 worth have much more thanksgiving than those who only been forgiven 50 worth. Oh, y'all missing this. Y'all missing it. Why does she have to stand up and sing? Can't she sing from her seat? Well, yes, she could. But because she's been forgiven 500 worth, the least she can do is stand in reverence to the God who has forgiven her $500 worth. Amen, somebody. Why does he have to come and give a praise report? We don't need to hear all of that. No, you may not need to hear all of that, but he has a lot to be thankful for. Wants to praise God who has done marvelous things in his life and the least he can do uh, is come down and say thank you Lord why does he have to sing that song uh, the way he sings it I'm tired he don't even sing it right the reason why he sang that song the way he sings that song is because he's been forgiven 500 denarii worth and the least he can do is sing with all his might. Amen, somebody. Why does she go and visit the sick faithful every Sunday when all she got to do is call them? All of that is not necessary. Why? Because she's been forgiven much and those who've been forgiven much will turn around and love much. Why does she have to stand and shout, clap his hands and get all ignorant in worship? It's because God has forgiven me a whole lot and every now and again I got to take off my piety. I have to take off my sedity, snooty nose in the air attitude and I got to give God some open hearted, open hand praise. Why? Not because I'm showing off for you because you ain't done nothing for me. I got to praise God who I know has brought me from a mighty long way and he's forgiven giving me 500 denarii worth. You don't know how good God has been to me, but I know where he brought me from. Hills. I had to climb hospital visits. I had to cross my finger zone. Had to go into the shadow of the valley of death. But God brought me through with his rod and his staff. So don't get upset when a person is doing something that you don't deem as acceptable. You just thank God for how much he's done for you. And if it's $50 worth or $500 worth, give God the praise. But don't get mad when somebody else knows that God has redeemed them from $500 worth of sin and brought them and set them on a pedestal, cleaned them up, poured his spirit into them, decided to call them his own. Don't get mad because you don't act like they act. You don't have to act like they act. Just don't try to keep them from acting the way they act. Brother Ma, you always talking about praise and worship, worship and praise, and how people sing and clap. They, why you always talk about that? Because when we assemble on the first day of the week, God is to be celebrated. God is to be shown how worthy it is. It's not a program for me or for you. We sing songs sometimes I don't necessarily want to sing. We, we listen to sermons I don't necessarily want to preach. But I tell you, it ain't about me. And the moment we learn that, moment we'll be able to accept one another. I'm not saying you got to like it. 
I'm saying you got to love it. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you got to like it. I'm saying you got to love it. But you, what you talking about? I, I don't like that style. That's all right. It's just a style. Guess what? Styles change from place to place. And folk, folk in the country don't know God no less or no more than folk in the city. Folk in America don't know or love God no less or no more than folk in another country. But thanks be to God who saved us all. So what your wife says, I want you to ask yourself, number one, what am I thankful for? And number two, how do I show it? So what you want to ask yourself. A preacher, am I supposed to show thank you by acting a fool and worship and doing all? No, 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 no. Not what I'm saying. Not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, when those who have been forgiven much do stuff that don't make sense to somebody else, don't worry that it don't make sense to you. That's all I'm saying. Don't worry that it don't make sense. I told a story all the time. I was, I was in school and I had to, uh, one of the courses I took when I was in school, I had to go observe different worship settings. And I went to the Hare Krishna temple. Y'all know that place on Venice? Very weird. It's weird for, it's an Eastern religion. It's very weird to a Westerner. And uh, you take your shoes off. When you walk up on the place, there's about 12 steps. And on the steps are filled with shoes. Because they believe when they enter into the house of God, you don't have no shoes on. Now I got there, I sat down to give you a mat, Brother Davis, a mat. I'm a big guy. And uh, I can get on the floor, but I don't like to be on the floor. And then when I get down there, it might take me a minute or two to get back up off the floor. So I don't spend a whole lot of time on the floor if I can help it. But, but this is their worship, you know. And so I took a mat, and I found a place where I wasn't near too many people. And, and I sat down, and they want you to sit Indian style, and I can't sit like that. So, so I had to recline. And, uh, very, 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 very weird experience for a Christian. Then, 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 then I had to go to a Jewish synagogue. And uh, I remember walking in. And it was a guy, he, he just immediately started talking to me because he knew I was a visitor. I mean, you know. I stuck out like a sore thumb. And, and he, he walked me through the process. He says, uh, I see you visiting. Um, the rabbi is going to come out and open the doors to the sanctuary. Then we all going to go in from the lobby into the sanctuary. He says, now, when we get in there, you have to wear a yarmulke to wear a yarmulke and, and, and I'll get it for you and I'll get you a prayer book it has songs and scriptures we, we read straight from the prayer book he said but I'm going to tell you it, it's, it's in Hebrew so it's backwards so page one is in the back so, so when you open up the book the right way it's going to say page 2000 it's not mm -mm, just, just turn it to the other to the back I said okay and um, I remember walking in and the rabbi young guy maybe mid 40s he, uh, he saw me he knew I was visiting and you know what he said to me Miles Welcome home, brother. <laughs> Thank you kindly. And I walked on in. I had been welcome home. And uh, ve very interesting. And for a Christian Westerner person like me, that, that worship seemed odd. Um, but then I had to go to West Angeles. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and 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 I couldn't make the AM service because I had to preach. So I went to the evening service. It starts at seven, and so we started five. I literally had to preach at five, and and I extended invitation. And I literally went and left and went over there, and uh, <clears throat> I get in there, and uh, at least now they say in the name Jesus. So okay, I'm like, all right, I can get with it, you know. And uh, you know, it was it was all right, you know. I had the full band going and ba doom ba doom boom ba doom ba doom, and I'm like, okay, it's cool. And uh, so I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the back, and uh, and you know, it's the guy gets up and and see, pre y'all don't understand. I listen to sermons differently from y'all, okay. So I'm sitting there listening to the sermon. I'm like, oh. Oh, man, that guy left a lot of meat on the bones, you know. And, and so I'm thinking, man, if that was me preaching that text, boy. And I was like, okay, Tyson, get back on your assignment. You're here to observe. But then I went from there to a Greek Orthodox Christian church. Now, that's a stark contrast between Pentecostal 
and Greek Orthodox. Big, huge church over on Normandy. And um, I walked in, and I sat in the back. And this happened to be their quote-unquote Easter service. They use a different calendar from us, so they celebrate Easter on a different day. And so I was in there, and the church was full of little old ladies. I said, Tyson, why are you telling this story? This is the point. Little old ladies. I mean, when I say little old ladies, I mean real old ladies, Brother Barry. And, 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 and we started worship. And what got me was they sang a cappella. I was like, wow, okay. But I want you to watch this. Brother Hardiman, do you know that the little old ladies never sat down? They never sat down. Now, I'm a big guy, and I wear size 14 and a half, you know. And, you know, after about 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, you, you start bobbing from foot to foot. Now, I know what it means to have 10-minute heels, you know, and I... And I'm thinking to myself, now, is somebody going to tell us to sit down? But because I'm a visitor, I don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. So I'm doing what they do. Somebody going to help me preach this? And, and, and so we stood. We stood and we stood. And they sang and we stood. And they prayed and we stood. And we read scripture and we stood. And the preacher got up and preached and we stood. And I got to thinking, now, come on. I know we're going to have a section in the service where we can sit down. And so I asked one of the ushers on the way out after standing almost two hours, I asked him, I said, why, what is it about Greek orthodoxy and standing? And he said, well, every church don't do it like this, but we have some sisters here who have made up in their mind they cannot sit down in the presence of God. And if a little old lady stand, we all stand. And when he said that to me, I said, oh my goodness, I'm going to take my knowing the Lord have himself and sit down in the presence of God, the very least I can do is stand when God shows up. And that's when I realized the way I've been praising and worshiping, guess what? I know some little old ladies who feet I know got to hurt and they will stand at attention in the presence of God. So the next time you think we're doing too much standing, You're here this morning and you don't know Jesus. Whatever your sin is, he's forgiven it. He nailed it to the cross, whatever your sin is. And all you got to do is get in him to get it. You get in him by faith. That's hearing and believing the word of God. The Bible teaches us that if we confess with our mouth that he's a Christ, the son of the living God, after having repented of our sin, we make ourselves available for water baptism, that the Lord would add us to his church. We will go down sinners. We will come up forgiven sinners new creatures in Christ Jesus. If you're here this morning and you have a lot to be thankful for, but maybe it has to be pride out of you, you need to give God thanks. You need to give God praise. You need to ask yourself, Lord, do you accept my gratitude? Because if you've been holding gratitude back, Jesus says, those who love more is evidence because they have been forgiven more. The question is, how much then have you been forgiven? Will you stand to your feet, Brother Barry? We're going to sing, Thank You, Lord. I know we already sang it, but we're going to sing it again. Will you come to the Lord this morning? Thank Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. 